Hello, good morning, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing more with our spinners here, right? So last time I showed you how to go through and make one of these guys. Um, this is the specific one that I printed, right? This is our, our larger one, remember? I think I made this one based off of a two inch radius or about a four inch diameter. And you can kind of see we talked a little bit about sizing of everything. Remember we have a central hub here and this is a skateboard bearing. The skateboard bearing is eight eight millimeters in diameter, it's seven millimeters thick. And what else do we have? We have 22, 22 millimeters, all right, in the outside diameter, right? So it's uh, eight millimeters center diameter, 22 outside, and seven millimeters thick. So we made our overall part seven millimeters thick, right? Yeah, that's what we have. We also have some hex nuts here that we have for our counterweights. And um, we do have some various other material we can use for counterweights as well, but I'll get into that in a minute. So, first things first we want to do is try to figure out how to make a custom design. And I'm going to show you how to do this in a uh, very simple way of just tracing the design, and then um, you're going to pick how you want to do it. The first way I'm going to show you is mirror, right? So, mirror, we're going to be talking about that radial balance that we need. So, this is with three arms. I'm going to show you how to do one with only two. Um, and what I'm going to show you how to do with only two is actually a very popular one that uh, kids really like to do which is our little Batman logo. Here is one that doesn't have any counterweights on it. Um, and the material itself is quite light. Um, things you want to take note of as we're designing these. The thickness. So you can see the thickness here. All right, this is obviously going to be a weak point. So we want to watch our weak points and try to make sure we have enough of a thickness. Now, this one here, let me grab my dial calipers and let's see how thick they made this one. Um, so at the thinnest point, we're only at about 65 thousandths or so, all right? Um, what we're looking for is to try to keep it at least 100 to 200 thousandths thickness. Now, this one doesn't matter as much because if we drop it, it's going to drop on these little wings here. Um, and I don't think this is going to snap, eh, especially if it's not counterweighted. But um, if, if you're going to have counterweights on here, make sure you try to keep at least a, you know, 100, 200 thousandths thickness there as well. Um, also, when you pick your design, you have to make sure it's even from one side to another. And the method I'm going to show you how to trace this out, um, you're not going to get it exactly perfect by just tracing an image all the way. So you're going to have to mirror it. So let's give that a shot, now, shall we? So let's go ahead and share my screen. I already have Inventor open, and I already have a new uh, standard.ipt file open as well. And I've already gone ahead and went online and found a Batman logo, actually two that I'm going to try to mess with today. And again, just like my other tutorials, we're going to start new 2D sketch. We're going to start that on our XY plane. We're going to have our origin right here. And the very first thing we're going to do this time is draw our two construction circles. All right. The first is going to be 22 millimeters for the central hub. All right. And that's a diameter. And here, all right, in the outside. Okay. Now remember, this is a diameter. So what do we want our diameter to be? Um, I'm going to make this about, I say between 40 and 50 millimeters in radius, right? If you remember from before, which is about, you're looking at about an inch and a half to two inch um, diameter. So that would be between uh, three and four inches. So I'm going to make it right in this, I'm going to split the difference and say 3.5 inches, okay? And home key and now you can see that I have to have enough room in here um, so that way I have enough space around this so um, what else could we do well uh, let's go ahead and make these construction lines and all I'm doing is right clicking on them for construction okay select first and then construction and then I'm gonna give myself a safe zone too now you can do this with another circle um, you can also do this um, with an offset so if I want to offset this, all right, and let's say I wanted to offset this, you know, 100 thousandths just to be safe. Now I know that I have, oops, hit escape here, sorry. Make sure you hit escape to get out of that tool. Um, now I have, this is going to be the actual hole, okay, that I need. This is my 22 millimeter outside diameter. But I also have now this 100 thousandths safe zone where I'm going to say that, okay, I want to make sure that anything that uh, is going to be outside edge is not going to touch this line or going to just touch this line. So that way I know I have enough thickness there. All right. Um, and since I started on 
our um, origin, I can actually mirror. So I want to make sure that I uh, center whatever image I have where the exact half of that image is here on this line and here on this line. So it's actually bisected um, vertically and horizontally. So what would that look like? Well, I'm going to go over up here to image, OK? And that image I'm going to select, I have to look in my pictures folder. And I have two different Batman logos here. Um, this is the standard one um, that I've done a lot of. Now, this one's a little different, a little bit easier to trace out. So I'm actually going to try this one because this is one we haven't done before. It kind of reminds me of like the old, uh, the original ones. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And you can kind of see how big this image is. All right. And right away, we're going to have an issue with this because it's going to be huge. I'm going to hit escape here. Um, and you're going to have to actually try to resize this. So you're going to kind of play with this. And I'm going to keep zooming in. And what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for having this image. So I want this point here to line up with the center. And then hopefully, if this point here lines up with the center, all right, what I'll get is um, this point lining up the origin, actually, right? So that's what I want. And then the center of the head here should line up as well. And now um, this actually looks pretty good. And you can kind of see how this is actually working out pretty good just with you know the quick uh, you know, and so there we go. So now I have the size that I need and the position that I need. And again, your size is going to vary. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball this up straight here. All right. So now it's actually fits perfectly inside the circle. And I'm referencing this line here, OK, which is my y axis with this point. All right. So now what do we do? Um, if you want to give yourself a little bit of room here to work with, and you can already see that it, we're a little bit off. So I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to drag this off. And I'm going to give myself another uh, construction line if I'm having trouble seeing. So here I'm going to take this, draw a nice big line here. OK. Select that construction. And now it should be a little easier for me to line this up. All right, and so as you can see, this is looking good. All right, and I'm just going to try to center this mass as best I can right on my logo. And so you can see I have my construction line, and I have the center of that head, and I have the center of that point right there. So now everything all lines up. Why? Because I'm only going to draw half of this, and then I'm going to mirror it. Okay, I'm only going to draw half of this, and then I'm going to mirror it. And that image is perfectly centered now on the origin, which is what I want. And now it's just going to be a simple case of, well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to make an actual line from there. And you can see how I keep you zooming in. So this is going to be my start and my end point for everything. All right? And that's also going to be my mirror line. So after we have this, um, what you're looking for is a spline tool. OK, your, so your standard spline. All right. and we need to make sure that we have complete uh, geometry, OK? So we don't want to have any open geometry. Notice how when I get close, it snaps to the end of this line and turns green. And so now all we have to do is move a little bit and click, move a little bit and click. And we will automatically get a nice smooth curve here. And you can see sometimes, oh, my graphics is going to be upset at me. Um, Sometimes this little uh, menu here, little side menu gets in the way, which is kind of annoying. But again, I'm not going to be um, too concerned with being exact on this example. All right. Uh, but for yours, um, the more little times you click, the more accurate to your image you're going to see. So you can see as I zoom out, it's going to try to smooth all of this out. And so I'm going to do this rather hastily. But when you do it, make sure that you take your time because you'll get the much nicer image. And the more you zoom in here, you can kind of see how I can put a lot of little points in here. And that'll make that nice transition that I want. And then this, since it's a nice smooth arc, we can uh, make sure that we, sorry, just keep zooming in on you there. Um, we're going to make sure that we uh, go in here. And I don't really want to snap to that line. So just watch that line there. 
my construction line. After you get the size, you can actually delete these uh, construction lines if you like. Uh, if you're having pr problems with your uh, cursor here sticking to that construction line. And the reason I did this is because it's easier for me to uh, trace this one out. And again, the more little lines you put in here, the more it's just going to kind of smooth this out. And again, just getting used to the zoom on this. Uh, one little trick you can do is just when you get into these real tight transitions, you can make a bunch of clicks. And then if I go all the way to the bottom, it's going to try to smooth that out. And then, again, make a bunch of little clicks if you want. And then it'll try to smooth that out. Um, and obviously, the more clicks we have, the closer to this geometry we're going to get here. And again, I'm going to try to hurry this up for you. And the biggest thing is making sure we have that green dot to close our geometry. And click OK. And the whole thing should light up green. All right, so now that the whole thing lit up green, we are good to go. Now, mirroring. Mirroring and patterning in 2D is generally a bad idea. All right. Um, the big reason being is a lot of times um, when you go to mirror, um, something like this, you'll get uh, the line to loop in on itself, or you'll just get an error or some sort of graphics error. Sometimes your machine will shut down, um, which is not good. Um, so to avoid that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to extrude this first. And you can see I can actually take my lines, and I can actually adjust them. Um, so you can do all this and go in and you can add in more anchor points and adjust your curve after the fact. But this is pretty much exactly what I want. So I'm going to finish this sketch. I'm going to hit the home key. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extrude. And there we go. Um, and I want to extrude this 7 millimeters. Click OK. And now I have half of a Batman here. Um, the next thing I'm going to want to do is just mirror this. All right, so now if I was doing something where I only made one arm, which I might do in the next video, um, or multiple arms, um, you're going to go to a pattern, right? But I don't really want to go to a pattern. I want to go up here uh, to mirror, and I want to mirror features, right? And the features that I want to mirror, oops, features, is this extrusion. And the mirror plane I want to use is this face. Click OK. And now... I have Batman, and it's perfectly, all right, symmetrical. And you can kind of see it if I take my time a little bit and I uh, smoothed out these edges more. I could have made this look a little bit better, uh, but for right now, I'm just worried about it being symmetrical. When you do it, take your time; it'll look better. So I'm going to go ahead, right-click, new sketch, and now I can still see the origin because I started on the origin, which is why it's so important. Um, and I'm just going to cut out the uh, center point here for my origin. All right, and do you remember this was 22 millimeters? All right, and I'm going to cut that out. Um, and let's say you were going to put multiple uh, uh, counterweights in here. Um, you just have to make sure that you have them equidistant. Um, so this is 22 millimeters. I can finish this sketch, and then I can extrude. I can cut. And now I have the basis for this. Uh, what I found is that for these, um, you really want to add some counterweights uh, to make them spin a little better. So what would it look like with counterweights? Okay, so that's what we have to decide, where you want to place counterweights in something like this, especially when you mirror it. Now, this is generally pretty tall, um, and usually if you're going to buy skateboard bearings, they come in packs of four. Um, so you can decide whether you want to use three bearings on this one and then use another just one bearing on a different spinner and then use like, a, uh, like a, a nut for a counterweight. So if we wanted to just add a, another um, let's see counterweight here, you could add it in here. You could add it in at the top and at the bottom. You can add them in wherever you want as long as everything is symmetrical okay so 22 millimeters and you can see what 22 millimeters looks like there and how close these things are um, and what I can do with this is I can always dimension um, from the outside of this you know what I mean and I could try to say that oh I want to be from here to this outside edge 
All right, and then dimension that. Um, I have to remember to project my geometry so I can actually see that line. Mm -hmm. That would help. But if I wanted to go from here to our outside edge here, um, and it's giving me an error because it's not liking that I'm actually giving that giving myself that distance um, because it's that complex curve. It's going to want me to actually put a, a line here or something, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to hit escape here. But you can just tell right away that you're still going to have to slide this over. You're going to see how close these are. And you want to make sure that they are equidistant from the center. So if you get something that looks good over here, let's say that looks good. I'm going to hit escape. Finish that sketch. Extrude. Cut. All right. And then if you want to get it in the same exact position, you can take that extrusion and mirror it. All right. And you can select on our origin over here. And you could just find, you know, your X. What is this one? Is the YZ plane. And I can use the YZ plane underneath my origin folder to uh, mirror it since I did it exactly at the origin. And now you have something with the counterweights right there. And you can kind of see that these counterweights are going to be closer together. And these are just going to be with three skateboard bearings. I've also done this with a uh, rod, um, just solid steel rod that we've cut off uh, with a hacksaw or an angle grinder, whatever you want, and just try to um, grind them back down to about seven millimeters. Now, when you do that, the weights are not going to be exactly the same, or it's very difficult to get the, the weights exactly the same. So it's not going to be as precise or spin as nice if you just use something like the, um, just like nuts that are um, very, very, very similar. Uh, so just uh, food for thought. Um, you could also put in smaller nuts in here, and then it'll look like they're a little further away, and they probably weigh about the same. So it's all up to you, and you can kind of customize this at will. All right, so that is using our mirror and some custom geometry to give ourselves a Batman logo, a uh, fidget spinner. And then you can go ahead and um, 3D print these. And again, I'm going to come back here to myself and then stop sharing my screen for a second. And you can see this is what the other logo looks like, all right? And so this logo is a little um, wider in this direction, all right? And so the way we've designed this one is that um, we actually took the image itself and distorted it, so we squashed it down a little bit, all right? So as you're going through and adjusting the sizes of the image, um, we've squashed it first, and that actually allowed us to draw this out into this shape. Uh, so that you can always mess with it that way too. And you can do that any way you see fit. Um, and then that allowed us to actually punch little holes in here um, for, by, by punch, I mean, uh, we actually used Inventor to do that. And then we used uh, the rod itself uh, for counterweights because that was a 3 solid steel rod that we cut off. That'll work as well. Or even if you have threaded rod, something like that, anything you can cut to that length that's seven millimeters or so and pop that in. Now, you also have the option of making this a little thicker if you want the counterweights to be heavier. Um, the only other thing is that when you make your um, caps, your caps are going to have to be a little deeper to stick out. You have to make sure you have clearance so they don't drag on the outside. Okay. So um, that's it for our Batman logo. So I hope that was helpful to you all, and I'll see you all next time.